and this story, this story didn't happen to me. All right, I'm breaking the rule. I should allow all of you to talk, but I'll tell you this story. So I had a particular colleague of mine who was okay. So he was, I think, it was in his last year. He was in last year in medical school. He had a younger brother that was into IT or so. His younger brother was doing some transactions with a particular organization, and each time they had to come and pay, they would accompany him on Allen Avenue. They would post two policemen with guns to accompany him because they couldn't. If you knew back then, Allen Avenue, there was traffic issues and all that. So the guy always came into a bank. His younger brother would always come into the bank, all right, with two policemen with guns, accompanying him to carry the gun on his go because they mm. couldn't put it in the vehicle and they could not put it on Okada so that Okada man does not take off. So they will manually carry Ghana must go, like 8 million or whatever, in Ghana must go, two, three, and then we'll carry it into the bank. So the lady knew his younger brother, always making cash deposit. Then she knew him. She was working in the bank. He was using that particular bank. So when he goes back then, you would go to the bank, you would tell them, before they started sending a lot, you tell them, please, how much do I have? You write your account number, they will check for you and they will tell you your balance. Okay. So he started toasting the girl. He was in final year med school. The girl was working in the bank and then she looked at how much she was earning all day. She laughed at him. <laughs> she kept laughing that, no, no, no. So eventually he finished, graduated, then he started working. And then he told her, I think he, the way he narrated the story to me, he told me that, he told her and he said, I'm going to ask you out. If, I'm going to ask you out for the next one, one year. If you, at the end of one year from today, if you still see me, that's the end of the relationship. I will never ask you out. So he started his house job. During his house job, he met a lady that he was interested in. Somewhere around like a month to the end of the house job, the girl was tracking. <laughs> all right, tracking his he earnings paid. and all that. Mm. And at the end of his house job, okay, she started trying to contact him, trying to call him, trying to, <laughs> and he was seeing her calls. He was already interested in that lady. Oh, okay, yeah. so he didn't bother. And he said he, all he just did was he waited. Okay, and then on the on the, the last day, all right, about some people can be so dramatic. 30 minutes to 4 o'clock. <laughs> he, he said he was at the bank that last day. Walked into the bank to go and make a transaction. So, and then the girl was like, I'm trying to reach out. I said, yes, this, this, this. How are you doing? And then guess it that, well, that, uh, that she has an answer for him. The answer is yes. He said, I'm sorry. It's, it's late. It's, it's yeah. too late. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, point is this. The reason why I told this <laughs> long story is that there are people you would look at and from the get-go, you are not, from the get-go, you are saying no to them because you can see, you've not said no to them, but you know that this person, even when this person comes and comes to you, you will not say yes to the person because my level is higher than this level. So that's the question hmm. we're asking. That's the question that Udi is referencing. Um, so the question, can you rephrase the question to them? With my story now, can you rephrase the question to them? We want to also help young men so that they won't waste their time. <laughs> Don't be buying you shawarma, send it. <laughs> <laughs>